Well, it has been a wild couple of months for the green coffee bean germination project. Remember when I said, unless you have come here from the future, in which case, please berate or congratulate me in the comments accordingly. Probably mild jeers are the appropriate response. I also said you might run into contamination issues. Yeah, I had some of that. And more of that. I also had some technical failures. None survived. But at least there is one shining ray of hope. Literally just one. Out of the 468 seeds of the first green coffee trial, one seedling has emerged victorious. A magical 0.2% germination rate. So this video is not a success story or a how-to guide. But rather, it is a hypothesis for why I failed and my attempts to mitigate these errors in the next trial. Yes, there are more trials incubating right back there. The sole survivor of trial 1 has been sown in a soilless mix and is in the incubator as well. Its progress will definitely be included in future videos. You better believe I am checking on that little thing every 5 minutes to make sure it is still alive. To quickly recount what happened last time on Adventures in Coffee Growing. The first trial was a bit ambitious in hindsight. Three coffee varieties from different countries, 13 types of germination media, replicates of 12 seeds per group for a total of 468 seeds. In less than five days, it was obvious that I had underestimated the microorganism load of commodity green coffee. Sowing three seeds per cell as I did reduces the likelihood that any one cell would be without a single germination. But that also means that if any of the three seeds was infected, the entire cell would be lost. In the future, unless you are sure of the disinfection of your seeds, only plant one seed per cell. After I saw the initial signs of infection, I didn't hold much hope for them, but I let the trial continue. Probably more out of aversion to cleaning than anything. I'm so glad that I left them alone, though. Meanwhile, I started a second trial with stricter sterilization protocols. I added an initial rinse with 70% ethanol for one minute and kept the 30-minute soak in 10% bleach. The seeds were all transferred to petri dishes so I could keep a close eye on them, and they definitely needed some supervision. Out of the three batches, the Kenya Source coffee was the most heavily contaminated. An entire dish was consumed, as well as dozens of seeds from the other dishes. The Mexico and Guatemala Source coffees had far fewer losses, but they were not entirely exempt. Note that these country names are just shorthand identifiers. I don't have any reason to suspect that this infection trend is directly related to the country of origin. Anyway, I removed the seeds as I noticed contamination during my twice daily inspection. Through this removal, I unintentionally set up a natural experiment that led me to a potential fix for my germination woes. It just so happens that the three seeds to sprout in trial two were all from the Kenya group and from sparsely populated dishes. Now it could be that these seeds were just better to begin with, but I believe something else was going on. You see, caffeine can inhibit root growth in live Arabica seeds. It's an autotoxic allelopathic chemical. In the lab, when coffee seeds are soaked in a dilute solution of caffeine, root growth is almost completely halted. Most published germination research doesn't even mention this effect. That's probably because this normally isn't a problem. In living coffee seeds, caffeine is tightly bound away from the baby root. As the embryo develops, the root tip is pushed out and away from the caffeine so it can grow naturally. Later, after the root is sufficiently large, the caffeine is released into the media, most likely to prevent other seeds from germinating and competing with it. I believe this same phenomenon is potentially the cause of my frustrating lack of germination. As I have been emphasizing, this is all in living coffee. Cell integrity in the non-living seeds, however, is weak enough to allow the caffeine to be released immediately, inhibiting any root growth in the surrounding area. Since most research is done on fresh seeds that remain intact, the few dead, leaky seeds do not exude enough caffeine to majorly inhibit the other's growth. Hence why this phenomenon is only mentioned in a few esoteric papers on this effect specifically, and not in the more general germination studies. In the case of my experiments starting from old commodity coffee, the sheer number of seeds that leak caffeine would have arrested any potential development in the others. This is especially true in trial number two, where 156 seeds per group were crammed into half-pint jars for the 72-hour imbibition phase. That's like soaking the seeds in a really strong espresso shot for three days. After that, I crammed the seeds into fewer petri dishes than I should have because I didn't have enough. No wonder they didn't like it. When I happened to remove the infected seeds later, I was also removing some of the caffeine inhibition of those remaining. If I had spaced the seeds out more initially, perhaps I could have seen significantly more germination. 
It figures that my attempts to be all sciency with enough replications for statistical significance would ultimately be my downfall. Further evidence comes from trial number one, where the only seed to germinate was from an expanded clay aggregate group in the Guatemala source coffee. Filter paper, peat, core, and all of the other media can wick moisture and along with it, caffeine. In contrast, LECA does not transfer caffeine between seeds. And since it was a Guatemalan coffee seed that germinated, it is unlikely that the Kenyan coffee was simply more viable at the onset. Now this is all rather sparse evidence and needs further testing, but I believe it is sufficient to warrant some germination protocol modification for our old green coffee specifically. Side note, it has been speculated that accumulating caffeine in the soil is the cause, at least in some part, of the noted degeneration of old coffee plantations after 10 to 25 years. The buildup of caffeine containing leaf litter and discarded fruit of the Arabica plants slowly inhibits new root growth, ultimately stopping coffee production. So, how do we fix this? Well, as with any allelopathic compounds, removing the offending chemical is the key. And since we all know that caffeine is water soluble, we can use a lot more soaking water and give individual seeds more space this time. As I said, this isn't really a how-to video, so I won't be discussing the protocol in depth except to say where I changed things from the last video. Maybe I will test this caffeine inhibition hypothesis directly in the future. But for now, I just really want some coffee plants to grow. <laughs> so this time around, I made the aforementioned protocol changes and improved the disinfection slightly. I started with a new batch of green coffee beans that I received this week. Conveniently, three types of coffee were available as a group deal under the new arrivals tag. The Rwanda and the Ethiopia source coffees arrived at the supplier in October, and the Peru coffee arrived in December. I would like to predict right now that the highest germination rate will be in the Peru source coffee. It is probably the youngest seeds, and it was dried on a covered patio. Well, some of it, anyway. The particular batch is a mix from many different small farms in the same area. It is organic, which may be good for reducing synthetic pesticide residues on the beans, but also bad because of the fungi that those pesticides are intended to kill. Regardless, it is still my pick for a winner. I heat treated 24 seeds from each coffee, 72 total, for 4 hours at 40 degrees Celsius. The seeds were disinfected with 70% ethanol for 4 minutes, and then 25% bleach for 30 minutes. As with trial 2, these seeds are all placed onto filter paper in petri dishes. 12 seeds per 140 millimeter dish. They are incubating behind me right now at 30 degrees Celsius. That's a little higher than optimal, but it is a good balance for the Passiflora and Carnata seeds that are incubating with them. As I said in the first video, coffee is slow to germinate even in the best of conditions. But hey, at least I beat my 90 day timeline. It's likely that the next update will be after some videos on a couple of different species that I have been working on. I suppose this video is rather anticlimactic. I shall end it as such.